Good evening, everyone. The webinar will start in two minutes. Good evening, a very warm welcome to you all and thanks for joining us for this local plan consultation webinar. My name is David Perrett and I'm part of the communications team here at Wiltshire Council. I'm joined here today by Councillor Nick Bottrell, Cabinet Member for Strategic Planning, Nick Thomas, Director of Planning, and Chris Rowe, Ray Bryant and Dave Way from our planning team. Councillor Richard Kluwer, Leader of Wiltshire Council and colleagues from Transport, Economy and other areas of the Council are also on hand to answer your questions. Before you start, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to how this webinar will work, and then we'll get straight on with the session. If you wish to see closed captions of speakers' words, then please click on the CC button on the bottom right of the screen, and they should appear after 30 seconds or so. The system sometimes takes a little while to get warmed up. If you're having any technical problems, the most common solution is to switch it off and switch it on again. So please close Teams or your browser, reopen it, and click on the meeting link again that was sent through earlier. Other problems may be down to your home internet connection. If you're hearing an echo, it may be that you have this event open in two or more windows. You're welcome to submit a question to be answered using the chat function, and please also leave your name. Our presenters will verbally answer as many questions as they're able to this evening. Many of you also submitted questions before the event, and we'll, we will also aim to answer as many of those as we can today. You should be able to see the slides on your screen and over on the other side, you should be able to see the Q&A panel. For some of you, it may be beneath your screen and you'll need to scroll down to see it. You may also need to click on the icon of two overlapping speech bubbles to open this panel. We will use this panel to make any announcements and post useful links. Finally, I just need to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be uploaded to YouTube after the event. However, only the faces and voices that can be seen and heard in the video will be those of the, the presenters. Anyone attending the webinar won't be seen or heard, although their questions may be read out. As you can see on screen, there's a list of today's speakers, and I will now hand you over to Councillor Nick Bottrell, Cabinet Member for Development Management and Strategic Planning, to introduce the webinar. Oh, thank you, David, and uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar about the local plan uh, consultation. I believe it's not an exaggeration to say that this is the most ambitious local plan that Wiltshire Council has ever produced. And it looks to provide the homes, employment and infrastructure that we need here in Wiltshire during the plan period, which is up to 2038. We've reduced the number of houses needed to be built since the last iteration of the plan. There were 45,630 homes which were consulted on in 2021, and this has been reduced to 36,740 in this updated plan. We only want to plan for the housing which Wiltshire needs, and not any more than that. And so it's important to note that a significant proportion of these numbers, 21,975 or almost 60% of the total have already been allocated, completed or are actually in the planning pipeline throughout the county. 
And so the additional requirement is for another 14,765 homes over the plan period. And that's the crucial point. These are the homes that need to be delivered up until 2038. So not all of them need to be uh, developed now. We're also planning for a carbon neutral county, which is why we've set zero carbon standards for all new developments and also insisted on a 20% 20, 20 biodiversity net gain for all new developments, when the nat national requirement is for 10%. All new developments are going to have cycling and walking connections, and we've maximised the number of brownfield sites in the plan to help protect as much of our countryside as we can. Plan also requires 40% of new greenfield housing developments of 10 homes or more to be affordable, with greater flexibility to make it easier to provide affordable housing in villages, where there's clearly an identified demand, but these developments will still need to be proportionate to the size of a village. It's taken many years of consultation, evidence gathering, and listening to feedback to get to this point. And so I'd urge you to take a look at the plan and the supporting documents, and please, please, please share your views with us. Apologies from me if you notice that I'll be signing out uh, or signing off before the end of this webinar. That's not because I'm not interested in hearing all the questions that will be raised, but because I actually have another meeting to attend. So I'm now going to hand you over to Nick Thomas, who's the Director of Planning, uh, who will share some of the key elements of the plan and also give guidance on how residents can respond. Nick, over to you. Thank you, Councillor Bottrell, and uh, good evening to everybody. Um, so I'll start by saying thank you to everyone for joining the online event this evening. Um, we're looking forward to hearing your questions a little bit later on this session. Before we do that, we have some slides that we want to talk to you about, as Councillor Bottrell has mentioned, to talk you through the local plan, the process and some of the headlines. Um, we have a, a, an online a, a range of stakeholders, including members of the public, landowners and developers, so people with lots of different interests in the plan. And for this reason, this presentation is largely generic in order to um, um, give you that information about the, 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 the plan itself, rather than focusing on any specific or individual sites. So the plan has been um, a long time in the making and it started six or seven years ago. And as many will be aware, the plan making is very complex and at times a contentious process. And we have to make sure that what is proposed is evidence based, that it's robust. And that when, when we have this um, plan tested at examination, it can be justified and, and delivered. So in terms of the timeline um, for the plan, um, we now have a published plan, of course, and that's been approved through the council's governance processes in the summer. And this has given us authority to move to this formal regulation 19 stage, which means that we're now at the, the, the final key stage of consultation before the plan is submitted to the Secretary of State next year, who will appoint an independent inspector to examine the plan. So some of you will have picked up that the published version contains some minor amendments to what was reported to Cabinet and Council in, in the summer. And this is to tidy up errors and to make some of the points in the plan and the supporting documents a little bit more clear. You have my um, assurance that none of the changes alter the substance of the plan and we haven't changed any of the sites that are being put forward for development. Mm. Also since the summer, we've been working on finalising the range of evidence and that's now complete. And you'll see if you've had a chance to have a look online that the published evidence is now available on the council's website. So the consultation has been underway now for two weeks and the government requires a six week consultation period. We've extended that to an eight week um, period in order to allow extra time for as many people as possible to get involved and to, event, to attend some of our consultation events. <clears throat> we also wanted our town and parish councils to have the opportunity to consider the plan at their relevant meetings. And um, we're holding um, 16 in-person events and we've already reached the halfway point. So thank you to all of you who've had the chance to attend one of those sessions. Um, those are being very well attended. And of course, this event has got a lot of people attending too. Um, for those of you who haven't attended one of the in-person events, the Roadshow will continue um, tomorrow and into next week. And it doesn't matter whether you're um, not um, living in that area where that, that event's taking place, you can still attend and there'll be officers there able to ask, answer questions and to discuss the plan with you. If I could just have the next slide, please. 
So this graphic um, shows you where we are, we are on the process of producing the plan. Um, it's a simple diagram and it shows that we're just over halfway through the process. The most time consuming parts are those early stages as we build up the evidence that, that informs the local plan. Mm. We are on track to submit the plan to uh, the Secretary of State for examination in the spring of next year <clears throat> and that will allow examination to take place later in the year and that will then lead to adoption. Go the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so recognising that we have people on the call with different knowledge about the planning process, um, we've just got a few slides to talk through what this is all about and how we've prepared the plan. The, the Wiltshire Local Plan, as Councillor Botterill mentioned, is one of our most important documents for shaping the future of Wiltshire and it will get, guide the decision making process on our planning applications and also set out the strategy for delivering our housing and employment needs, as well as what we want to do with our town centres and our community facilities. You'll see that the plan um, guides communities when producing their neighbourhood plans and there are housing numbers included for communities to plan for in the event they wish to produce a plan for their area. Importantly, we have a host of policies in the plan that seek to protect our important natural landscapes and our historic environment. We have policies that promote sustainable development as we work to reduce carbon, um, carbon um, from our developments and also address the impacts on climate change. It's important to remember this is a strategic document. It will cover a 15 year time period to 2038 and detailed matters will be considered as part of the planning application stage. The next slide, please. So why are we doing this? So the government requires us, um, as it does for all local authorities, to have an up to date local plan and to plan positively for the future needs of our communities. And our local plan sets out the council's ambition for sustainable growth and will improve the quality of our, our towns and villages. The core strategy which we have in place is now eight years old and ours of course is not the oldest plan in the country, some are much older, but it does cover one of the largest areas geographically in the country and we have a high number of homes to plan for in a relatively constrained part of the country and this makes the task much more complex than most other local planning authorities. <clears throat> So there's a couple of points to tick off from, pick out from this slide. Um, firstly, the plan makes provision for securing infrastructure such as roads, schools and open space, and that is intended to offset the impacts of growth in certain areas. It also makes sure that our strategy aligns with the latest government guidance, so that's set out in national planning policy. And uh, the, the other point to raise was that this, this um, provides opportunities for existing businesses either to grow and expand or for new businesses to invest in Wiltshire, which in turn will provide jobs for local residents. Mm. That's all I wanted to say for the moment. I'm now going to hand over to one of our senior planning officers, Ray Bryant, and he will take you through some of the headlines in the plan. Thanks, Nick, and a very good evening, everybody. Uh, next slide, wonderful. Uh, so now to move into the substance a little bit more uh, of the local plan, as Councillor Councillor Bottrell uh, outlined earlier on. Uh, actually, uh, we've got a housing number uh, that has come down from that which was consulted on in 2021, and uh, the the figure now is is just shy of 37,000. Why has that figure actually gone down? Well, uh, there are sort of three reasons, uh, three three key reasons that, that we can cite. There was uh, a, an uplift to the government's standard need assessment for housing was no longer required to balance homes uh, and forecast jobs. Uh, local communities uh, told us in the last consultation in 21 that they were concerned about the strains on local infrastructure and harm to the environment. Secondly, concern was also expressed by the development sector about too great a focus on large sites at Chippenham, Trowbridge, and to a lesser degree, uh, Melksham. This over-dependence on large, larger sites, uh, it was felt, would endanger achieving a sufficient rate and scale of housing delivery. And thir thirdly, uh, a final concern was that the evidence used in the assessment needs consulted upon in 2021 predated the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and Brexit. Uh, so as, as was stated earlier, a, a large number of houses 
uh, are already uh, completed or in the planning pipeline. Uh, so we only need uh, to build the number of homes uh, that, that we need. So, so that's around 14,000 as stated. And the plan period being to 2038 means that not all the houses need to be developed now. Uh, zero carbon standards for all new developments, uh, that was again highlighted uh, earlier on and will help, um, means that the county will help the country in getting towards uh, net zero. And an another plus we feel, this is due to come into international law, uh, biodiversity net gain, uh, the national requirement is 10% and in the local plan we're looking uh, at 20%. And again, as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, we, we will be seeking to maximise brownfield sites. That's that's building on previously developed uh, land. Next slide, please. How's the plan been prepared? Well, it's been uh, informed by consultation, evidence, and national policy. Uh, and this 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 consultation is uh, about the plan meeting a, a series of tests, and it's upon this basis uh, which people are asked to, to be to, to make their, their representations. Uh, once that's done, all representations then go to the planning inspectorate uh, together with a consultation report on the main issues raised. People may remember that the last consultation in early 2021 uh, was on potential growth options uh, and also we featured a little bit about uh, our principal settlements uh, being Trowbridge, Chippenham and Salisbury. The, uh, the the evidence on housing and employment uh, assessments has been updated and the plan importantly of course sets a strategy uh, about how much development we need and where that should take place. That's been a very thorough and lengthy process as has been uh, the process around site selection with sustainability and uh, deliverability being uh, utmost in our work. Uh, something uh, that uh, we have designed for 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 this uh, consultation is a new approach for calculating housing requirements for rural settlements. And again, perhaps it's just uh, worth uh, a few uh, a few moments to uh, talk about that. The, uh, the the local plan distributes a modest proportion of the county's overall uh, housing requirement to rural areas according to the need in each of the four strategy areas. The strategy areas being uh, Swindon, Trowbridge, Chippenham and Salisbury. Uh, national policy asks that neighbourhood area requirements reflect the overall strategy. The local plan therefore focuses new homes towards the larger rural settlements that have a more prominent role uh, as provided for in, in the plan policy uh, number one, settlement strategy. These settlements are Wiltshire's local service centres and large villages, uh, and they offer services and facilities to often uh, somewhat wider rural hinterlands. And this uh, we feel is, is an important step in maintaining uh, the resilience of our more rural communities. Finally, the plan uh, will be scrutinised and challenged uh, at examination uh, next year, an examination in public. Next slide, please. Tests of soundness. Uh, so, so a plan must pass examination by uh, an independent planning inspector and the, the inspector will be required to test whether the plan has been prepared in, in accordance with, with a range of legal requirements and the plan uh, must be sound. Uh, currently to be sound, a plan must be positively pre pre prepared, sorry. This means uh, that it, provides uh, a strategy that meets that meets all needs. Housing, uh, needs for business, uh, infrastructure. It needs to be justified, i.e. It's, it's an appropriate strategy and based on evidence. It needs to be effective and deliverable over the planned period and importantly addresses uh, matters that where we have to deal with uh, neighbouring authority areas. Finally, not least, it needs to be consistent with national policy and that policy is the national uh, planning policy framework. Um, OK, I'd like to hand over now to Chris, please. Next slide. OK, good evening, everybody. Um, so 
some some uh, details from myself regarding um, the the content of the plan. Um, now, firstly, the, the local plan review is just that. It's a review of an existing plan. Um, it's the council's existing strategic development plan, the Wiltshire Core Strategy. Um, so as we've touched on already, we're looking to um, extend the time horizon for the strategy set out in that plan. Um, so the uh, the diagram on the right hand side may look familiar uh, to some of you um, who know the Wiltshire Core Strategy. So the settlement strategy aims to define what role the settlements in Wiltshire have. And I think as Ray has just alluded to, there's um, there's a number of um, different um, uh, there's, a, there's a hierarchy of settlements within Wiltshire. So so starting at the at the top, uh, we have the principal settlements of Chippenham, Salisbury and Trowbridge. And these are strategically important centres and the primary focus for development. Uh, next level down, we have the market towns, which uh, also have the ability to support sustainable patterns of living through their levels of facilities, services and employment opportunities. And these also have potential for significant development. Next level down, we have the local service centres, which are smaller towns and large villages um, or larger villages which serve the surrounding hinterland. And then towards the bottom of the strategy, we have the villages. So both the large villages, um, which are, are settlements with a limited range of employment services and facilities, and the numerous small villages which have very le low levels of facilities. Um, and in, in the villages, um, development will generally be um, uh, retained as being for, to meet local needs rather than a, a wider area. So we've also identified four what are called housing market areas within Wiltshire. So in order to try and break down um, this significant sized uh, uh, um, local authority area, um, we've broken uh, it down into a number of smaller areas. So housing market areas are areas in which the majority of house moves take place and the area within a lot of people, um, the majority of people travel to work. So uh, within Wiltshire, there are housing market areas um, centred around Chippenham, around Trowbridge, around Salisbury, and the area in Wiltshire surrounding Swindon. So um, as uh, as a local authority, we're only required um, to plan for our, uh, for our own needs. So Swindon Borough Council will be planning for um, the borough of Swindon. So, but uh, we will need to um, identify um, the uh, the areas surrounding Swindon out to Marlborough and Pusey uh, and Royal Wood and Bassett. So there are four area strategies um, which it, it identify the social and economic forecasts that uh, that we need to meet in each of those HMAs and that helps guide growth to the most sustainable locations within those HMAs. Uh, next slide please. OK, so t again, touching on some of the points that uh, that have uh, some of the numbers that we've got that we've discussed already, um, the number of homes that the plan is, is looking to meet is 36,740. Uh, that's a reduction from what we previously consulted on in early 2021. Um, as Ray mentioned, that was um, to do with the, um, the, the change in the um, uh, economic forecast. Uh, a lot of the uh, economic forecast that we previously relied on um, hadn't foreseen um, the effects of things like Brexit and the pandemic. Um, uh, also, the plan period that we're looking to plan for is now shorter as well. So the number of homes that we're planning for has now been reduced. And um, as Ray said, uh, again, we've uh, identified a certain number of those who are already committed through having planning permission or, be alloc or being allocated or they're completed already. So that leaves um, uh, just over seven and a half thousand homes um, to be allocated um, that will be delivered within this plan period. Now, um, there are um, further uh, allocations or some of the allocations will be um, a significant size sites and they will continue to deliver beyond the end of the plan period in 2038. So the, the number of dwellings actually being allocated is slightly higher um, than that given that figure given there. 
The remaining homes will um, be de delivered by uh, what's called windfall sites. So these are sites that are not planned for, um, but are um, in accordance with the strategy and the policies within the plan. And also by neighbourhood plans being um, formed by our local communities. Um, at the bottom, um, it identifies that the plan is it, delivery of housing is split into three phases. So there's the phase um, that we're currently in up to the point of adoption, um, and there's a level of housing need of just over 8,000 houses in that period. Then in phase one, uh, post adoption up to 2031, um, there's a, a, a delivery level of just over 10,000. And then in the final phase of the plan from 2031 to 38, um, there's a, a notably higher figure. Um, the reason for that difference between phase one and phase two is to allow for um, larger scale sites to, to come on stream, um, all the pre-planning work um, and uh, that needs to be done with those and to get them through the planning process. So we anticipate some of the larger um, allocations will take time to deliver, um, but um, but that is why the, the figure in phase two is noticeably higher. Next slide, please. So these are the um, house, the figures for housing for each of the housing market areas. Um, you can see in the first column we have a, an overall housing need. Um, there's uh, some small rounding errors there, um, there, but the total do, uh, does add up to 36,740. Um, in the second column we have the number of homes completed already, um, so obviously the plan period has started already, um, and also we have a, a high number of uh, commitments, so planning permissions allocations that exist already. So that leaves a number of homes to plan for, uh, and that's where the focus uh, of the plan is, how we're going to meet those, um, that remaining 14, uh, 14 to 15,000 number of homes. Uh, next slide, please. So the plan is not just about housing. Um, we also need to identify uh, levels, uh, how the employment base within Wiltshire is going to grow over the plan period uh, to ensure that um, people have places to work and that we sort of generate um, economic development uh, within Wiltshire. Um, so there's uh, 120 hectares of employment land um, required um, and there's uh, a certain amount of uh, just over 135 already committed. Um, we're proposing uh, just over 27 hectares of new allocations in the locations that you can see um, in the bottom left. Um, and the, the, the larger allocations are focused around um, the main uh, transport network routes, um, larger scale um, piece of land, um, typically uh, the plant um, and to service uh, those sites needs um, uh, needs to be very close to the, uh, the, the main road network. Um, along uh, the M4, uh, the A303 and uh, down the A350. Uh, next slide please. So a short bit about uh, long-term growth as well. Now of course the plan lasts till um, it, it plans for growth until 2038. Uh, that's some 15 years away. Um, uh, but of course we need to start planning for the needs that are going to arise in the latter parts of the plan period now. So the three other aspects um, to the plan to just touch on here. We've um, we've identified a number of reserve sites. Um, now reserve sites are um, sites um, that's where um, the uh, the level of housing, um, of course the council um, uh, hope that um, the housing allocations and housing delivery um, occurs at the, um, the, the rates that it's expecting. Um, but if there are um, shortages in the, the housing land supply, so for example, if there are problems on some major sites um, or if the, the market changes, then the, the amount of housing land that the council has available for the forthcoming years may reduce. Um, and we, which is why we've identified three reserve sites um, with criteria for when those could be released for housing. Um, we're hope, hoping that, um, um, that uh, we, they may not need to be released, um, but of course we need to plan for eventualities um, such as changes in the market. Similarly, we've also identified broad locations for growth. So uh, these are um, Chippenham, uh, uh, Melksham and Trowbridge we've identified as being settlements that we can also plan for in the longer term. 
and we're anticipating there being additional urban extensions at those locations towards the end of the plan period. So not in the relative short term of the first five or 10 years, um, but we've identified those as being potential locations where um, there'll be uh, future growth, um, which we need to start considering now. So these will provide additional assurance that the land supply is secure and they'll offer the flexibility to adjust the supply for high levels of scales of growth. The final point is um, we've also identified that an area of search um, uh, in, in coming to the conclusions that we have in the plan, um, there's the, um, the availability of land in the south of the county um, uh, has been um, of uh, uh, some, some difficulty. Um, the availability and suitability of, suitability of land in the south due to constraints um, has been uh, relatively difficult. Um, and we've identified that we may need to provide a, uh, a new community um, so north of Salisbury, um, potentially around 1500 to 2000 homes. Um, but of course, this um, to, to develop a new community such as that may take some time to do um, for, to identify the exact location for it. Um, and this will be likely delivered through a future plan. Um, but this plan identifies that that's required and um, it's uh, further work will happen over the, the plan period up to 2038 um, to establish where that may go. So I'm going to hand over to uh, one of my colleagues, David Way, who's going to discuss a bit about the Chippenham housing market area. Thanks, Chris. Um, this slide <coughs> shows housing needs for the principal settlement of Chippenham, the market towns and the rural area within the Chippenham housing market area. Housing need for the plan period is shown in the second column for each settlement and area. And after deducting housing completions and housing already in the pipeline, the number of homes we need to plan for in each area are shown on the right hand side of the uh, slide. Now at Chippenham, actual rates of housing growth um, up to 2022 have been lower than the Wiltshire core strategy plan growth, um, due mainly to strategic sites allocated in the Chippenham site allocations plan and other major sites um, that have had issues to address um, and therefore taken some time to gain reserve matters or full planning permission. The southern expansion proposed in the local plan will complement allocations in the Chippenham site allocations plan and will underpin a step change in housing delivery <clears throat> alongside additional employment, community uses and supporting infrastructure. Carl, in recent years, uh, Carl has seen rates of housing growth higher than those planned for in the core strategy. Evidence suggests that further significant growth would not be appropriate for the town and the draft local plan reflects this with a reduced housing requirement of 1,230 homes uh, with a residual requirement of 600 homes. The bulk of this residual is to be met on one of the plan allocations land to the north of Spitfire Road at Carl. At Caution, uh, the town has experienced greater levels of house building than originally planned, although it does have significant constraints, including stone mining areas, a rural green buffer and a bats corridor. Proposed scales of growth at the town respond to concerns about the loss of greenfield land, coupled with the significant environmental constraints which restrict the availability of land suitable for housing and employment development. Uh, moving on to devices, the town is constrained by the physical landscape surrounding the town, as well as by ongoing traffic congestion and air quality issues. For these reasons, the level of housing growth is reduced from what has previously been planned for. 
Some housing development has come forward via appeal at the town and the remaining requirement can be met by the local plan allocation at Devizes Wharf, Assize Court and Wadworth Brewery um, and through site allocations in the Devizes neighbourhood plan. At Malmesbury, um, Malmesbury has a high quality physical environment with the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty to the west um, and the confluence of the River Avon and Tetbury Avon, as well as an exceptionally high quality built environment centred on Malmesbury Abbey. For these reasons and the fact that a number of planning permissions have come forward via appeal in recent years to meet housing needs, the level of growth proposed in the local plan is significantly lower than in the past. Melksham has continued to see significant housing growth, particularly to the south of the town. Housing growth has significantly exceeded that envisaged by the core strategy and proposed housing allocations in the plan will meet the bulk of the outstanding residual housing requirement. A broad location for growth that Chris mentioned earlier may be identified later in the plan period enabling a lengthy lead in time for the coordination of major infrastructure, such as the planned A350 bypass at Melksham. And finally, the rural area, um, there's a residual housing requirement in the rural part of the Chippenham HMA of 730 homes. Uh, rural housing is discussed later in this presentation. Scales of housing growth over the plan period for each of the local service centres and large villages in the rural part of the Chippenham area are shown in table 4.4 of the local plan. Next slide, please. Many thanks, many thanks, Dave. Apparently last time uh, people couldn't see me. I'm sorry about that. My own uh, my own device isn't uh, telling me uh, yay or nay whether you can see me, so I just Hope you can see me this time. Anyway, you can certainly see uh, the, the slide, I know. And we're now talking about the Salisbury house, uh, housing market area, or as they're called in the local plan, uh, strategy area. As uh, Dave mentioned earlier, uh, a table in front of you with three columns. Again, it's this, it's the same thing. It's the need, it's, it's what's being completed in the middle and uh, what we still have to uh, plan for uh, in the right hand column. I think what is interesting about these figures is that the middle column, i.e. the completions and commitments, uh, they're either nearly halfway done or they're actually in some cases over halfway done. A um, little bit of background then on uh, some of our places in South Wiltshire. Uh, Salisbury, uh, as we've learned through this, this, this uh, plan making period, is, is a very constrained settlement where environmental factors limit the expansion of the urban area. Uh, as a result, 4,500 homes are proposed at the city in the local plan, as against uh, slightly more than 6,000 uh, in the core strategy, which uh, also included uh, the local service centre of Wilton. Uh, he to Salisbury's growth will be successful regeneration of the city centre. Uh, next, Amesbury has seen rapid residential growth in recent years. The town is situated within a historically sensitive landscape, uh, World Heritage Site, which presents a significant challenge in terms of identifying suitable land for further growth. Albeit dwellings planned for in the last period, uh, in the last planned period, will continue to be delivered in the coming years, uh, and that's in in the south, uh, the southern southern periphery of the town. Solstice Park and Boscombe Down will continue to support the local economy, uh, capitalising on Amesbury's proximity to the uh, to the key A303 and Gordon uh, Science Park. Uh, Tidworth and Luggershaw, the, the, the twin towns, uh, they serve a mixed uh, military and a civilian community. Uh, a strategic site uh, is proposed uh, in Luggershaw, uh, and that's known as land southeast of Empress Way. With the growth of Loggershall over the planned period, there are opportunities importantly to improve the settlement's self-containment with further commercial growth, particularly at Castletown Business Park, attracting inward investment and expanding uh, the local 
employment offer. Uh, moving to the rural area, uh, that can seem to be quite a big figure for the rural area in South Wiltshire, um, but the scale of housing growth also includes uh, four uh, local service centres, uh, and they are Wilton, Downton, Mere, and Tisbury, along with uh, the last the, uh, the large villages in that area as well. And if this is of interest uh, to any of you, you can uh, you can look uh, in more detail at this information in Table 4.8 uh, in the local plan. And finally, as uh, Chris alluded to uh, earlier. Uh, there is also an area of search uh, for a new community in, in South Wiltshire. A possible new settlement is identified, acknowledging that uh, further growth of the existing settlements within this area is becoming increasingly more difficult owing to uh, environmental constraints. In the event uh, a new settlement is needed, construction would not commence uh, until the latter end of the plan period and then continue beyond uh, 2038. The scale of housing envisaged at the new settlement is estimated to be in the region, as you can see in front of you, of 1,500 to 2,000 dwellings, uh, along with five uh, hectares of employment land. And again, if that area of search is of interest, uh, only is going to have a look at policy 21 in the local plan and the key diagram as well, which is uh, figure 3.1. Uh, OK, that's uh, that's that for Salisbury strategy area. I'd like to pass back to Chris, please. Next slide. OK, now uh, moving on to the uh, the Swindon housing market area. So the, the portion of the Swindon HMA, which is within Wiltshire, um, it's a relatively small HMA. Um, um, the, the portion with Wiltshire, within Wiltshire is anyway, as I mentioned, um, the Swindon Borough Council deal with the majority of the uh, of that um, of that HMA. Um, similar format to the Chippenham and uh, Salisbury slides. Um, so starting with Marlborough, it's uh, a constrained settlement in terms of its ability to accommodate growth due to its location within the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, and as a result, um, historic rates of housing development um, have been reduced um, over the plan period. Um, uh, we also can identify that around 60% of the homes necessary to meet the scale of growth at Marlborough have uh, already been built uh, or identified, uh, including through the recently made Marlborough area neighbourhood plan. Um, to, uh, in order to meet the, uh, some of the residual, the plan has supplemented this supply with additional allocations. Royal Wooden Bassett, um, the town has experienced, experienced greater levels of housing building than originally planned in the core strategy. Um, the proposed level of growth in the revised spatial strategy, which is um, the uh, strategy that, that backs up this plan and how we've arrived at the levels of growth for each location that we have, um, it's higher than in the adopted core strategy um, and reflects um, the town's status as a market town within the hierarchy. Um, but it also considers environmental and infrastructure constraints at the town. So we can see for um, Royal Wooden Bassett um, as a, a level of housing growth of uh, just over 1300 homes. Um, there's not too much in the pipeline at the moment. Um, so there's a residual to be met, uh, which we've met by um, allocations. Um, there's also a uh, residual amount in the rural area, um, very similar to in Chippenham and at Salisbury, um, where we'll be looking for uh, local service centres and large villages in that area um, to meet the residual. So again, sales of housing growth, as Ray mentioned, will be in uh, table 4.12 of the plan. Next slide, please. Um, and finally, the Trowbridge housing market area. Um, so starting with Trowbridge, um, it, it, this, it hasn't seen the significant levels of growth we anticipated by the core strategy in terms, uh, uh, um, in terms of housing and employment growth, um, but it's expected that previous allocations will still come to fruition. Uh, the town is constrained by the Greenbelt to the west and 
uh, with bat colonies um, at, um, in uh, European designated environmental um, uh, designations at the east and the south. So the plan is directing growth to the less constrained north of the town. Um, we've also allocated all the brownfield sites at Inox Mills by the railway station. Um, at Bradford on Avon, um, housing development has been completed during the core strategy plan period, and that's met expectations of growth. Um, the strategy for Bradford on Avon is to provide growth on a modest or very small scale um, and to deliver additional employment and therefore helping to improve the self containment of the town by providing jobs locally. Uh, as we know, it's very heavily constrained by the Greenbelt and proximity to Bath, to the Bath and Bradford on Avon uh, special area of conservation. At Warminster, um, it's a rich and historic town centre and built environment um, set within an attractive local landscape um, on the borders of um, the uh, area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, it's currently and continues to be subject to significant levels of residential growth through the delivery of the West Warminster Urban Extension. And the town's position at the headwaters of the River Wiley um, presents a challenge in terms of managing levels of nutrient levels entering the water course. Um, this will require some mitigation over the local plan period to enable further growth. Uh, and finally at Westbury, um, the proposed level of growth for Westbury is 1400 homes. Um, there's a significant number already identified as completions or ongoing uh, uh, sites being under construction. Um, with, so we're identifying 570 homes and 16 hectares of employment land. So it's a slight reduction in, in growth compared with the core strategy, um, but uh, recognises high levels of housing delivery in the past, but of course mindful of the need to improve facilities, services and job creation um, at the town. Um, and again, the rural area within uh, the Trowbridge HMA, um, there's a residual amount of 380 homes to be identified through windfall um, or through um, the development of neighbourhood plans. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, so going through uh, rural housing relatively uh, quickly as time is pressing on. Um, the, the, the plan identifies um, a housing requirement for uh, each of the local service centres and large villages. Um, national policy requires us to identify a housing requirement for, um, for all uh, neighbourhood plan um, uh, locations, um, but we've gone a step further and identified a particular requirement for each of those uh, lower level settlements. So that we delivered through um, infill and through redevelopment opportunities um, and also through uh, neighbourhood plans, uh, rural uh, exceptions and first home exception sites. Um, so in small villages, there's a uh, policy criteria for when housing will be supported, um, including through um, identification of rural exception sites and first home exception sites where there's a local need identified. Within the countryside, um, these are um, locations outside of the villages. Um, development we restricted to uh, uses um, that would be um, uh, it, 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 well established within the countryside for equestrian uses or for agricultural and forestry workers. Um, finally, we look to make use um, of existing developments in the countryside uh, by reusing redundant or disused buildings um, or by the subdivision of homes. Okay, so next slide, please. And I think I'm going to pass back to Ray to talk about the consultation. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Okay, very, uh, very quickly on this. Um, the consultation web page is uh, there in front of you. It can e easily be found uh, just using a search as well. Uh, we've got documents uh, at the main, uh, at Wiltshire Council's main hubs, uh, County Hall, Bourne Hill in Salisbury, Mountain Park, Chippenham. Uh, electronic access is available at all uh, Wiltshire's libraries and paper copies uh, of the plan of the sustainability appraisal and habitats regulations are at Amesbury, Bradford, Calm, Chippenham, Caution, Devizes, Malmesbury, Melksham, Pusey, Rowland Bassett, Tidworth, Tisbury, Trowbridge, Warminster and Westbury. 
libraries. Uh, do come along uh, to see us. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, we've still got uh, we've still got half of the events left. They finish on the 18th of October. And again, uh, if you need more information, please go to the website. Next slide, please. And how to respond to uh, to, to to this consultation? There is also on the website a consultation portal. Uh, no login required. It works very well. And if if you wish, there's also an opportunity uh, to look at, uh, at at a lot of maps and make uh, make make your representations uh, using the maps. That that's an excellent facility that we've uh, introduced this time. Uh, you can also uh, email uh, using the form available again on the website, and that's to be uh, returned to us. This is all on the website. Uh, it can also be posted. Um, there's a guidance note uh, available uh, on the website which talks more about how uh, people need to respond to this consultation. Uh, give us a call. Uh, the number's there 01225 uh, There's the email. And finally, uh, paper copies of the documents can be requested, but there is uh, a fee. So that's OK, back to Nick. Um, th thank you, Ray. Um, just very, very quickly before we move on to the, the interesting part of the presentation, we will hear from yourselves in terms of your questions. If we just move on to the next slide, please. Um, so um, very, very briefly then, the consultation runs until 5 p.m. on the 22nd of November. Um, some have asked us whether or not they can submit comments in writing or by email, and that of course is absolutely fine. But what we are doing is encouraging people to submit using our new and um, very, uh, very user friendly um, online system as possible. And that makes it easier for us to process comments and to um, de deal with the, the back end side before we move on to the submission stage. We want to hear from as many as, as possible, um, both positive comments as well as any concerns that you've got. So. Um, please feel free to say if you think there's a part of the plan that you like. Um, there will be a period between the closing of the consultation and then when we submit the plan um, <clears throat> late, later towards the back end of the spring next year to us to review those comments. And if there are issues that we think we can um, resolve or that you know we can um, amend in that time, then of course we'll be happy to have a look at those. The, the examination is likely to run in the autumn, the back end of next year. The inspector will dictate the timescales and the matters that will, they will be looking at at the examination themselves. And they may suggest some modifications to the plan as we go through the process. If, if those modifications are main, substantial, then that will be subject to a further consultation. But that's much further down the line and something just to be, be mindful of. I'm going to pause, pass back to David. I think we're now going to move on to the question stage. Thanks very much for that, Nick. Um, so yet, yeah, as you say, we now come to the Q&A part of tonight's webinar. So um, Councillor Clearer and officers on the webinar will do their best to respond to as many questions as we can. But um, all questions from this evening will be collated and we will be providing written responses on our website by the end of the month. So we've got lots of questions. So if we don't get to yours, we will provide a written response to it. So I'm going to start off with um, some of the questions that were um, pre-submitted before um, when people signed up for the webinar. Um, so starting with, um, and I believe this one's for Dave, um, it's from Brian Johnson and it's about Chippenham's expansion. And it says, when, when will or was the statement below ever updated to reflect the true number of people according to the last government census data? This is taken from the Chippenham Site Allocations Plan adopted May 2017. Um, it says the Wiltshire Core strategy sets the scale of growth to be delivered in Chippenham for the period 2006 to 2026. Core policy 10 requires that approximately 26.5 hectares of employment land and at least 4,510 new homes are delivered at the time by 2026, but does not specify sites to deliver growth. Um, Dave, are you able to answer that one? Yeah, I can have a go. Thanks very much, David. Um, the issues and policies for Chippenham are set out in policies six, seven and eight of the local plan. Um, and they will replace the key issues for the Chippenham area 
and core policies nine and ten of the Wiltshire core strategy. A wide range of evidence has been gathered so far um, and consultants uh, called opinion research services were commissioned to prepare a Wiltshire housing needs assessment to assist in providing up to date evidence to inform the review of housing policies. This has included using up to date population data. OK, thanks very much, Dave. So um, here's another one for you on uh, Chippenham. So um, it's from Annette Weaver and it's um, what's the rationale and thinking behind the plans to expand Chippenham to the south? OK, um, the proposals and evidence leading to the identification of South Chippenham as an allocation as set out in Local Plan Policy 7 are explained in the Planning for Chippenham supporting document which can be found on the local plan consultation website. Thanks Dave and just to note that there are um, planning four documents for every area on, on the site as we said before um, you can find all the information you need on that one page. Um, so moving on to a question about Trowbridge this is from Robert McNaughton. Um, are Wiltshire Council planning any further developments in or near Hilberton? Um, Dave I believe you can answer this one too. Yeah, um, the local plan sets out what development is proposed, which includes an allocation um, at land northeast of Hilperton. This is for approximately 600 houses, a primary school, a nursery and um, a convenience store. Um, people can refer to policy 53 of the local plan for more information on that allocation. It's also proposed there will be a country park to the north of Paxcroft Farm, which will be for indoor, uh, sorry, informal recreation, which will seek to avoid harm to the Becksteins bat maternity colonies um, at Green Lane and Biss Woods. Um, and people can refer to policy 54 of the local plan for more information on that. Thanks uh, very much, Dave. I'm going to move ahead uh, slightly to um, cover Salisbury, if I may. So um, I've got one for Ray here. So um, this is from Lucy Palmer. It's why have the overall housing numbers increased from 940 in 2021 to 1530 in the 2023 draft local plan? OK, thank, thanks for that, Dave. The January 2021 consultation proposed a plan with a time span from 2016 to 2036. Uh, this included an, an indicative figure for Salisbury City for that 20, 20 year period of 5,240 dwellings. Uh, once uh, completions, uh, which we, we've talked about in commitments, permissions and allocations, uh, were subtracted from that, uh, we came to the residual uh, of 940 homes, which is which is what the question is is, is asking. However, following uh, following the last consultation in 2021, uh, the council revised the plan to extend its horizon to comply with the national policy requirement, whereby plans look forward a minimum of 15 years. So now, uh, 2020 to 2038. Uh, this period includes a lower total housing requirement for Salisbury City of 4,500 dwellings. However, housing completions uh, were, were, were fewer and uh, once uh, permissions and allocations uh, again are subtracted, that leaves uh, what we call the residual of uh, 1,530 units. So uh, in summary, the res residual is now greater uh, due to the difference in the, uh, this was just, it's just it's just words, but it's it's what planning does, uh, to the difference in the housing requirement being planned for, the plan period over which it should be met, uh, the number of completions that have occurred in the plan period so far, and commitments up to 2038. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I've got another one for you, um, Ray. This is coming from a few uh, different people. Um, and it's, it's it's about sort of traffic in the Salisbury area. So it's why has Wiltshire Council underpinned the local plan 
with the 2021 Atkins Transport Review that is no longer valid as housing numbers have doubled since 2021. The Transport Review stated that even with 700 houses, traffic would be enough to cause rush hour overload on Newbridge Road, Stroke Coombe Road. Yeah, so we uh, we are aware that the local community uh, expresses concerns over over this this, this matter. All the proposed uh, local plan sites have been incorporated into Wiltshire Council's strategic transport model, uh, which covers the entirety of the authority area and provides forecast traffic flows, including roads and junctions in South Salisbury. The transport model is based upon a wide range of traffic counts taken in 2018 and 2019 and utilises national traffic travel forecasts to determine future year traffic flows. In addition to the national traffic uh, travel forecasts, the traffic generation associated with uh, the proposed local plan sites and incomplete or uncommenced allocations are added to the model. Uh, finally, alongside the strategic model, uh, a recent study of Harnham Generatory and Exeter Street Roundabout has been completed with new traffic surveys collected uh, this year in 2023 and uh, this study is being used to define a scheme of junction enhancements designed to meet traffic demands through to 2036. Thank you very much for that one, Ray. So now I'm going to move on to some of the questions that have been asked um, this evening and um, the first one is for Chris to answer. So it is um, does the plan as outlined meet the five year requirement? OK, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, David. Um, so this um, this refers to the the uh, requirement in, in the national planning policy um, that councils need to have um, five years worth of housing land supply um, available for development um, for the forthcoming five years. Um, so um, in answer to the question, um, this is outlined in the housing delivery paper. Uh, it's one of the supporting documents um, which forms part of the, the evidence uh, base and strategy for the plan. Um, so at adoption of the plan, um, estimates are that there will be a supply of um, just under six years worth of deliverable sites measured against the phase requirement as set out in the plan. Um, if you um, remember a little earlier, I also talked about the, the, the pre-plan housing requirement, um, uh, also the pre-adoption housing requirement, um, the phase one requirement and the phase two requirement. So this is measured against the phase one requirement, which is the position, the phase that we're going to be um, in uh, when we adopt the plan. Um, so figure five in the housing delivery paper shows the anticipated number of years housing land supply um, across the first five years of the plan following adoption. So um, from just under six years to uh, beyond six years. That's great. Thanks very much. And so um, the next question from this evening is um, this is one for Dave to answer. Um, is the local plan replacing the core strategy? OK, thanks, David. Um, the short answer is uh, yes, the local plan will replace the core strategy and various saved policies um, from the old district local plans. Um, there's one policy, core policy 47, meeting the needs of gypsies and travellers, which will be replaced actually through a separate gypsies and travellers DPD. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, the next one from this evening is. Um, this one's for Chris to answer if you if you can, Chris. Um, why are there only reserve sites in three towns? OK, thanks, David. Um, yeah, as I referred to a little earlier um, in terms of uh, looking at longer term growth, um, we've identified um, three reserved sites for housing. Um, so those are um, Corsham, uh, Bradford and Avon and Malmesbury. Um, now, each of those towns are uh, constrained environmentally um, and therefore other settlements uh, within Wiltshire in the, those respective HMAs are preferred in terms of growth. Um, 
Now, the reserve sites, the development of those will only be permitted under certain criteria. Um, and now that is if the overall supply of deliverable sites, um, which are those required to maintain a five year housing land supply, um, if that falls below five years um, and we identify that through our uh, monitoring records in our housing land supply statement, um, then that's the, those are the circumstances under which um, those reserve sites would be released. Um, so the purpose is, is just is to rem remedy a current shortfall. Um, they can combine, um, the, the reserve sites combined could accommodate just under 400 dwellings. Um, but it's not envisaged that these will be drawn upon um, because of the way that housing supply will be delivered from other sources, such as the other allocations, um, both existing allocations and those that are allocated in the local plan. So, but nevertheless, it's worthwhile retaining a contingency uh, within the plan to avoid planning by appeal uh, and the uncertainty that that involves for uh, local communities. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, the next one um, this evening is for Ray. So um, it, this one says uh, the national planning policy framework says Brownfield first. Chippenham has been reduced from 585 to 200, even though we have 113 at Old College, 95 at the Old Evidence Station and the Bridge Centre, Emery Gate, Bath Road car park and many more. So it, so it's 200 not accurate for factual um <clears throat> not accurate or, or factual yes thanks dave okay most um most brownfield opportunities uh will be windfall sites uh and during the uh, plan making process uh were either difficult to identify uh or due to constraints on the sites um this limits the amount of dwellings that can come forward uh, they might also be they might also encompass uh, a mix of uses uh, and this would also reduce uh, the number of dwellings uh, that can be delivered. I hope that answers the question. Yep, thanks very much. Um, the next one is for Dave. So how does the plan meet the proposals set out in the blue green infrastructure strategy? Thanks, David. Um, I'd say that the local plan, um, the biodiversity net gain policy and approach to allocation of sites aims to support and align with the council's existing green and blue infrastructure strategy. And the biodiversity net gain, along with the forthcoming local nature recovery strategies, will seek to enhance and restore existing priority habitat and key GBI corridors such as riparian um, corridors and floodplain meadows. Thank you very much. Um, the next one is for Richard. So um, it's about Alderbury. So what are the proposed housing densities, especially in rural area? In Alderbury, we have seen approvals for inner city density housing, but in a rural area. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, God, quite a complex question to answer that one. Um, uh, fundamentally, if you look at policy 98 in the plan, that outlines the sort of uh, factors that would need to be taken into account when you're looking at what density needs to be applied to an area and when the inspector hopefully um, gets to that, they, uh, providing they don't make any changes, that will then form that the, the, the framework. I mean, in broad terms, you would expect density to be lower in a particularly rural setting and higher in a particularly urban setting. Um, the Alderbury site you're talking about was actually caused due to a five-year land supply issue where a developer put in what, essentially a hostile application under five-year land supply rules, one that wasn't an allocated site um, and therefore won't isn't developed under this, this local plan. I think to say it's in a city levels of development. I mean, inner cities can be really dense levels of development. Um, I, I, I take the point that it's perhaps slightly more concentrated housing than Alderbury is used to. But equally, if we're going to make effective use of land, we have got to make sure we are getting the maximum benefit from our land um, without creating communities that, that are simply dysfunctional. Basically, have a look at policy 98. Have a look at the design guide. Give us your comments on that. That's great. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, so the next one for Ray, and Ray, this is a very popular question that seems to come up at, at many events. So it's, 
While appreciating the need for all these houses, it would be comforting to hear what plans there are for shoring up the infrastructure with doctor's surgeries as they are already oversubscribed. OK, yes, thank you. In developing our proposals, uh, we are in regular contact with uh, with healthcare, healthcare services, uh, for example, uh, NHS Wiltshire and Integrated Care Boards. Uh, these groups identify the capacity of existing health facilities and, if necessary, the need for new facilities in each of the main settlements. And actually, this is set out uh, for each of our settlements in uh, what are called the planning for documents, so planning for Chippenham, planning for Melksham, and so on and so forth. In general, single um, GP and dental practices are rare and not considered viable. As such, there is often no requirement to provide a, a new uh, GP or dental practice for each uh, new development, but this will depend on the scale of the site and what local facilities are, are, are available. Uh, instead, managing the impact of, of small developments may mean extending existing uh, is existing facilities or increasing capacity uh, within a practice to provide additional primary and uh, community care space. Uh, for larger developments, uh, new health facilities may be provided uh, within the settlement. Thank you very much. Um, David, sorry, I can't I can't resist coming in on that one. I think we've got to be honest pe with people around dentistry and I can do it as a politician. The idea that we're going to be seeing more dentistry given the strains on dentistry at the moment. I don't know about the rest of you listening, but my NHS dentist doesn't actually have a dentist for me at the moment. Um, the, the strains on dentistry are extreme. It, it's an issue to raise with the integrated care board um, and, and it, 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 it's something that really does need fixing, but it's not something the local plan is going to fix. It's something national government need to. Thanks very much, Richard. Thanks, Ray. Um, the next question is another one that comes up um, quite often, and it's about a planning term. This one's for Dave. So um, this person asks, um, what is a windfall site? OK, thanks, David. Um, well, a windfall site is a site that is permitted for development, but it's not actually allocated in the development plan. Um, it's a, a site not specifically allocated for de, uh, for development, um, but unexpectedly becomes available for development during the lifetime of a plan. Uh, most windfalls are referred to in the housing context, so they provide housing. Um, they can be very small sites for one or a number of homes, but they can also be um, very large housing sites that come forward on greenfield sites. Thank you very much. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, is take some more of the pre-submitted questions. Um, there's quite a lot um, that cover various different towns and areas in the county, so I'm probably going to take a couple from each one to try and give it that um, good geographical spread. So I'm going to start off with Khan and another one for you, Dave. So um, this is from Tony Arles and it says this plan is incompatible with the air quality action plan. More houses means more traffic and more pollution. Why is Wiltshire C Council imposing 600 more houses on Khan when we already have, when, sorry, when we are already in breach of air quality targets and we do not have the facilities to support current houses? OK, well, um, the housing requirement for Carl and how it was calculated is set out in a paper called the Revised Spatial Strategy. Um, it is acknowledged that there is an air quality management area in Carl um, and that further housing growth may increase traffic volumes on local roads. However, the housing and employment allocations in the local plan um, at Calm, land off Spitfire Road, land to the north of Spitfire Road, have been chosen as they are well located in terms of accessibility to the town centre and have potential to incorporate opportunities for sustainable travel, which would lessen future impacts on the air quality management area. 
The sites are also well related to existing and new homes, um, as well as existing businesses at Port, Port Marsh Industrial Estate. This will allow opportunities for people to travel by sustainable forms of transport to the town centre and also to work. It is also hoped that housing development to the east of Carl will make a new bus route viable linking Oxford Road with Prince Charles Drive. Um, and interest has been shown in this new potential route by bus operators. Uh, policies 10 and 11 of the local plan require funding contributions from developers towards measures that improve air quality. Develop developers will also need to provide an assessment to understand cumulative effects of development on relative receptors in the AQMA and to identify appropriate mitigation measures. It should also be noted that the local plan should be read as a whole um, and policies such as policy 71 transport and new development and policy 101 air quality will likely have positive impacts on areas that have air quality management areas. Go on, David. I'm 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 going to jump yeah. in again, just with a bit of political context. Um, you've had a very good technical answer there as to why Calm is, uh, uh, why that allocation comes to Calm. I think it's really important to understand at the broader level, we are set a housing target by government. It's not a housing target to meet Wilch's need. It's to meet the national need. Wilch's need, I don't know, nineteen twenty thousand over the period. I would reckon looking at our affordable housing need and what we need to develop to get the affordable housing in would would be a probably a closer figure, but but without housing. Firstly, if we don't meet government targets, they step in and do this for us. So we lose all control. We're back to over provision inside Alderbury. But but if we w w when we when we're allocated those targets, we, we we've got to bear in mind that this is also how we get the affordable housing that we need to make sure that we are housing people on our housing waiting lists, making sure that we are getting the right provision of housing across the county. So I know people get very concerned when they see allocations in their own area and think, gosh, that's terrible. But but as, as a context from us as a council, we've got to make sure we are getting enough housing in place to meet those other pressures we've got. And let's be blunt, the rental housing market is broken and the housing register is growing at the moment. And we've got to make sure we've got that pipeline of housing to meet it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm now going to move on to um, Royal Wharton Bassett, as I say, so that we can get a decent geographical spread of the county. And, and this one is for Dave again. Um, this is from James Shannon. Um, why was the proposed building site to the south of the town, that's Royal Wharton Bassett, not, not adopted? What was the just, justification for the four smaller plots to the north being selected instead? To me, it seems like the southern plot has many advantages, whereas the ones to the north only reduce the buffer between us and Swindon, which is something the neighbourhood plan should said be maintained. There are many other problems with these sites, not least because they're in Lydiard Trigos, yet will use Royal Wharton Bassett infrastructure. OK, thanks, David. Um, well, I can say that the process um, and the evidence behind site selection at Royal Wooden Bassett is included in the planning for Royal Wooden Bassett document on our consultation website. Um, nine sites at Royal Wooden Bassett were assessed um, in various stages of the site selection process. Um, and the final selection um, site was a balanced planning judgment taking into account many factors with specific regard to the sites to the south, some sites would be dependent on a new bridge across the railway line and across floodplains um, with various landscaping and drainage issues. Um, while sustainable transport accessibility and connectivity with the town centre would remain a significant issue. Um, it's also been made clear to the council by the landowner that the land required to provide a bridge across the railway to access some of these sites south of the railway would not be available um, to be considered as part of this plan. 
and without assurance that the critical infrastructure required to deliver these sites could be achieved, um, it wouldn't be appropriate to allocate the sites for development to the south. Thank you very much. Um, I'm now going to move on to um, Bradford on Avon, and this is one for you, Chris. Um, it's from Charlotte Tomlinson, and it's what are your plans for the old golf course in Bradford on Avon? I would like to see it as a public nature reserve. OK, thanks very much, David. Um, yeah, so the um, uh, you recall sort of when I was um, discussing um, reserve sites um, uh, sites uh, sort of in my uh, presentation earlier on um, uh, sites that we uh, don't envisage um, needing to be brought forward, um, but uh, are held in contingency in case um, existing sites don't um, uh, don't deliver as anticipated or in the timescales that we anticipated. Um, now within the local plan we've actually allocated or not allocated but we've um we've um we've identified the former golf club uh, as a reserve site um which would provide for 120 homes um now as i mentioned this will be only be released under certain criteria and um as i've said this is a, a contingency arrangement should existing um sites not be brought forward um or other allocations uh, be delayed um so that's um that's um, what we've identified. Um, of course, we've um, we've uh, we've, we've uh, mentioned there's, uh, these reserve sites in uh, both Bradford um, and Malmesbury and at Corsham. And I know this has been a, a subject of um, discussion at both the, the Bradford events and Malmesbury event that we've taken um, that we've uh, taken part in so far. But um, I think probably um, a, a ideal uh, response would be to to to. Um, put in representations um, that uh, about your uh, um, about your quest uh, for your question and say what your thoughts are on the um, on the reserve site policy. D D David, sorry again, yeah, I'm jumping no in. Uh, we we've got to be really uh, again honest about this. We haven't said this is an ideal site for housing. The landowner has put it forward to say they would like to see housing built on it. We've then assessed it and felt well actually probably not on this round, but if we need to get to reserve sites, yes, it would be suitable. If the landowner doesn't want it to become a nature reserve, Wiltshire Council can't make it a nature reserve. Um, we, we've this, this isn't a case of us having carte blanche to say this is what should be done to each area of the county. We've got to deal with the owners and what they want as well, which is uh, not, 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 not unreasonable that the owners of land should have a, a significant say in what happens to it. Thanks very much, um, Richard and Chris. Um, I'm now going to take another question from this evening um, that's coming this evening. And um, again, this one's for you, Chris. So um, this one is, how do you define a principal settlement? OK, so um, as I mentioned um, earlier on, the um, the, the settlement um, strategy um, that's set out in the in the local plan, um, it hasn't changed significantly or indeed at all from the the Wiltshire core strategy, which is the existing um, plan um, that we work to. Um, now, as part of that um, plan, there were um, there was an assessment done on each of the settlements within Wiltshire and their ability to accommodate growth. So, looking at their existing facilities, um, their, their, their their size, um, the population, um, uh, and that was how we established um, the hierarchy in the first instance. So, um, the principal settlements and indeed market towns serve um, different strategic roles. Um, which uh, were identified through an objective assessment of their characteristics and functional relationships with the air surrounding area. Um, so Chippenham, Salisbury and Trowbridge um, are they're the largest settlements in Wiltshire uh, and the main concentrations for businesses and homes um, that contain a large range of services and facilities um, important for serving a much wider area. Um, so going forward, um, they're a primary focus for change that will see them adapt and expand um, to continue in that the, the role of a principal settlement. Thank you very much. Um, the next one from this evening is for Ray to answer. So um, Ray, how much weight is given to developers responses to the consultation? Uh, it appeared in the last series of published responses that developers responses were giving given equal weight to that of entire communities. OK, right. Uh, thanks. Um, 
Well, all responses uh, are given uh, equal consideration fundamentally. Uh, we give uh, a balanced uh, consideration to all the representations received and following the consultation, uh, a report uh, will be prepared and details of all the representations received uh, together with uh, the local plan uh, and supporting documents uh, will be passed on uh, to the examiner. Thank you very much. Another one for you, Ray. Um, what type of housing is considered to be affordable? Well, the best way really of answering this is to go to uh, national policy. There is a glossary which defines affordable housing uh, in the in, in the national planning policy framework. Uh, and uh, it's affordable housing is defined as including affordable housing for rent, starter homes, discounted market sales housing and other affordable routes to home ownership, which include shared ownership, relevant equity loans, other low cost homes for sale at a price equivalent to at least 20 percent below local market value. And finally, uh, rent to buy, which also includes um, intermediate rent. Thank you very go much. On, uh, go on, David. Yeah, Just, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, OK, that, that the technical definition which you've just had is 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 really important because it that's how we support people who are defined as 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 being in need of that extra assistance with housing the problem is it doesn't translate well to the public who think affordable means cheap um which i'm afraid in planning terms it doesn't um a, a really difficult issue to explain but but a distinction that that needs drawing it, it's for people who who are qualifying who meet the various criteria to be on the housing waiting list or who meet the criteria for shared ownership and so on um so it is it's quite a technical answer which is probably quite hard for people to understand it took me a long time to get my head around it thank you very much um, the next one is for dave and this is also about affordable housing so um it's how will you ensure that affordable housing is actually provided and how can you ensure that this is social housing i.e for people on the housing waiting list Thanks, David. Um, well, we do have a policy in the local plan, um, policy 76 on affordable housing, which um, specifically sets out the requirement that 40% um, affordable housing should be provided on sites of 10 or more dwellings um, or sites of five or more in designated rural areas. The policy includes specific criteria relating to tenure and distribution. Um, so an element of that affordable housing will be uh, social housing. Um, this is the starting point to ensure affordable housing is provided across Wiltshire. Thanks very much. OK, so we're just coming to the last couple of minutes of the webinar now, so we'll just take a couple more questions and then and then I'll wrap up. So um, the next one is for Chris. So this is when we received this evening. Um, is there a financial forecast published which will indicate the, forca the forecast economic impact of the local plan on both the council and local communities? Uh, OK, um, what um, there's, there's probably two um, uh, pieces of evidence base um, that re relating to this question. Um, we have a, a, a viability assessment which assesses the, the cumulative impact on development viability, um, incl which includes an assessment of some of the proposed site allocations of the policies um, within the local plan. Um, there's also um, uh, an evidence base, the employment land review update. Um, I mean, that considers employment land requirements and demand over the plan period from uh, now up to 2038. Um, and this considers a number of scenarios for growth. Um, so we've used that evidence base um, it, in terms of um, identifying sites, um, the, 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 the levels of growth for uh, employment land um, and we've set allocations accordingly. Thank you very much. So I'm going to this is going to be the last question that we take this evening. But as I say, if we haven't got to your question this evening, we will be providing written answers and publishing them on our website. So um, this uh, last question this evening is about Ludger Shaw and it's for Ray. So um, it's from Anthony Pryor. 
I'm concerned about the impact of the proposed plan for Ludgershall on Shodess <laughs> and Lane. Apologies if I didn't I, say that correctly. I, I know the one, yes. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. okay. So it says it's not suitable for the increase in, in traffic the development may bring. Um, the Andover Road has diverted traffic down this down this lane. Access to our property has been considerably restricted as a result. We're also concerned about the effect it may have on the value of our home. Yeah, OK, the, the proposed allocation of land at Lugger Shoal, land southeast of Empress Way, uh, that's policy 40, uh, adjoins uh, Shoddeston Lane and is of a scale whereby uh, the character and use of, of the lane would be affected. The allocation relies on the provision uh, of a new access route from Empress Way crossing the lane and connecting to the Andover Road to the east uh, of the town of, of Lower Shore, thereby, uh, thereby enabling an alternative route to the site to avoid overburdening uh, the existing highways network. Uh, Shoddeston Lane is heavily constrained uh, as an access route due to the existing narrow railway bridge towards the Andover Road, which would be very difficult uh, and costly to resolve. Vehicle crossing points will need to be designed to avoid and prevent vehicles from turning into the lane. Uh, the development of, of this site uh, provides an opportunity to maximise the use uh, of, the, of this lane for walking and cycling connections with both uh, the main Andover Road and uh, Luggershaw Town Centre. Thanks very much, Ray, and thanks to everyone um, who's answered uh, questions this evening. Um, so, and obviously thanks to everyone who's taken time out to join us this evening and for your questions and comments. Um, we do hope you found this webinar informative. Um, as I say, we will upload the recording of this webinar to YouTube and it will be available on our website in the next day or so. I've posted a link to the local plan page in the chat. Um, that's where you'll find all the information you'll need, including information on the remaining in-person events. As I say, there's, there's another eight to come. Um, if you missed the in-person event closest to you, um, you can still attend any event that you wish. Um, so all events are open to all. So don't feel that um, if if your local event has passed that you can't attend, you still can. Um, we'll post the um, written Q&A that covers all the questions that you've asked this evening and all the questions that um, were pre-submitted on on the, the local plan web page um, by the end of this month. So finally, Please remember to take part in the consultation, have your say. Um, that's a really important point. Um, we, we do need you to take part and let us know your views on the plan. Um, all of the information you need to take part is covered, uh, that, sorry, has been covered in this webinar and is also available on that web page on our website. So thank you very much once again and good evening.